Hi guys, today's topic is how to give and receive good feedback with a bonus at the end of what to do with that feedback once you have it. This is a topic that's really important to me because from personal experience, I've had both horrible feedback in college and really amazing feedback with my first beta reader group. I really want you to be able to experience the right kind of feedback because it's so valuable and so necessary. No matter how perfect we think our writing is, if someone else reads it, they're going to find issues. And you want to know what those issues are. <laughs> My experience in college was so bad that even though I was an English major with a writing emphasis, I wanted nothing to do with writing after I graduated. But it wasn't until I worked with the 20 plus people in my beta reader group this last summer on my novel Evelyn's Number that I realized what the difference was. You guys, it was like a night and day difference. But how do you get somebody to tell you the problems without making you want to go crawl in a hole and never come out again? It's a fine line. Back in my writing classes, the feedback would just be, I don't like it. This doesn't work. This isn't good. What do you do with that? When I worked with my beta reader group this last summer, I had some of the most amazing people who did feedback in such a healthy, constructive way that I immediately had clarity on what the difference was between now and back in college. If you are on the giving end of the feedback, you just need to remember two things. Number one, every single word on that page came directly from the author's heart and there is no way to give harsh criticism without it being offensive. So give it gently. Number two, when you do have to give constructive feedback, make sure that you explain why you feel that way. I'm going to give you the perfect example from one of my beta readers in my group last summer who did this kind of feedback in the most amazing way. It was absolutely perfect and it was probably the clarifying moment when I realized this is the difference between good and bad feedback. Okay, so in my story, there was a dog because I'm a crazy dog lady and of course there's going to be a dog in every book that I write, probably. We'll see. And I remember probably 15 or 16 of the beta readers said things like, don't get rid of the dog. This is amazing. I love the dog. And then there was one person who said, you know, I'm not quite feeling the dog and I'm not quite sure why. I've grown thicker skin since college so I wasn't offended, especially since she said it in a very gracious way. I was just like, well, I guess um, it's 16 to 1. So um, by the way, that's the rule of three that we'll get to at the end. And the coolest part about her feedback is that later on she came back to it and she said, you know, I think I figured out why. When she took the time to explain to me her process in her head and why she felt that it didn't work, I was actually able to keep the dog in the story but make it better using her suggestions that were actually very important and useful. So because she followed the two rules of good feedback and did it in a very gracious, constructive way and then went on to explain why she felt that way, I was able to not only improve my writing but really enjoy the process as well. I didn't ask her if I could share this story beforehand, so I don't want to say her name, but thank you. You know who you are. Okay guys, it's time for the bonus tip. What do you do with feedback once you have it? If you've gotten any feedback at all, I'm sure you know that no matter how good they all might be, they also might disagree. When I worked with my last beta reading group, I had dozens of situations where they gave really good feedback, very constructive, helpful, and explained why they felt that way. but they disagreed with each other. So then what do you do? I had to do a lot of research on this before I found anything useful, but I highly recommend Jenna Moresi's videos on beta readers. She talks about something called the rule of three. The rule of three is really simple, but so, so helpful. Basically, if one person says something or two people say something, it's just an opinion. But if you get three or more people who are all agreeing and generally saying the same thing, it's time to pay attention. Sounds simple, right? When I'm working with my beta readers, I send them a Word document that they fill in their answers after. So my preferred method is to take each individual person's answers and plug them all into one specific Word document that holds everything from that beta reading round. If you are gathering their information by phone or some other method, I would still suggest clump them together and see where people are agreeing. So this rule of three saved the day for me because all of a sudden I knew the areas that I absolutely needed to work on. If three or more people agreed, I went at it and I fixed that plot hole or issue. 
but if one person said something and I wasn't sure I agreed with it and I couldn't find anyone else saying that same thing, I felt the relief that it's okay to maybe not take that particular suggestion, especially if like a dozen other people disagreed with it. This can be a little bit hard if you're anything like me. I have that Minnesota nice, um, want to make everybody happy and want to use all the feedback because they put in their time and their effort. You have to remember that you can't make everybody happy and so this rule of three really takes the weight off your shoulders and you can think, okay, it's just one person who said that. I'm gonna take it subjectively instead of as a hard and fast rule. Okay, that's everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked what you heard, please take a second to press the thumbs up button on the side there and also subscribe to see future videos. I was trying to post every week and that was insane with all these publishing deadlines and NaNoWriMo and the holidays coming up. So I've decided that for the moment, I'm going to do videos every other Thursday instead of every week. So make sure that you subscribe to stay connected and see videos in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.